Hey folks, this is Kalani. We finally have some new news. Patch 8.1.5 is now up on the public test realms. I was pretty hopeful that we were going to see this stuff last week, but I guess getting out of the holiday funk took a little longer this year. So with patch 8.1.5, we should be able to see and test various new features and additions to the game, including the two allied races that this expansion has been all about, the Zandalari Trolls and the Kulturan Humans. You can create either race to check out their animations, racial abilities, and all that good stuff. On the topic of racials, Zandalari trolls are absolutely bonkers right now. They're guaranteed to see some further changes, otherwise everyone and their mother will be race changing for sure. More on that in a little bit. Patch 815 also brings a new portal room for each faction, which we'll have a little peek at. A new round of the Brawler's Guild, new Naga invasion events, new war campaign quests to continue the story into Nazjatar, I'm sure, new profession quests and items, Warlords of Draenor Time Walking, New Dark Moon Fair stuff, and even some updates to Arathi Basin and Warsong Gulch. Not everything is available right now though, so we'll tackle each feature as it becomes available on the PTR. What I do want to look over right now are those Zandalari racials. Alright, so what's all the hubbub about? Why do I think these racials are so ridiculous? Let's start with the embrace of the lower racial. This is actually six different abilities all crammed into one, and you can choose any of these lower buffs at any point it would seem with no cooldown and no duration. Embrace of Akunda gives your healing abilities a chance to heal their target for 28k. That seems like a very strong effect but it will depend on how often it procs but free heals on top of your heals is still really powerful for a racial but that doesn't even scratch the surface embrace of born sandy gives your damaging abilities a chance to deal extra damage and heal you for 100 percent of the damage dealt sounds pretty useful let's keep going embrace of gonk increases your movement speed by five percent not too bad embrace of kimball gives your damaging abilities a chance to cause your target to bleed for about 14k damage over six seconds which can stack up to three times. That could be super powerful for multi-dotting if it allows you to. Embrace of Kragwa gives you a chance to gain an additional 20k HP and thereabouts and a whole bunch of armor whenever you take damage, which is pretty insane by itself for any of you tanks out there. And the last one is Embrace of Paku, which gives your abilities a chance to grant you 5% crit. And I know it says for until cancelled, but it's actually just for 12 seconds. So, Embrace of the Lower basically gives you an extra free trinket for whatever role you decide to play, just for being a Zandalari troll. You can currently change this as often as you like too, though tanks will probably stick with Kragwa for the most part, healers will likely stick with Akunda, just because those two effects scream tank and healer respectively, but you have so many options here. 5% crit is huge for a racial proc, that bleed effect or lifesteal from one SMD could provide a huge advantage as well. Now, don't get me wrong here, I absolutely love the idea of different lower providing different bonuses and benefits. I think these are some of the best racials we've seen in a very long time. They work with the racist themes and it gives you a crazy amount of choice. But if you have one set of racials like this, everyone has to have something to compete. If this single racial goes into the live game like this, anyone who is semi-serious about progressing in Raid or Mythic Plus or even PvP will be faction changing to a Zandalari troll as soon as they are made available. It's just too powerful. It's wonderful. It's fantastic. I think the game would benefit hugely from meaningful and impactful racial abilities, but in the current state of the game, Embrace of the Lower is just too strong. Now, this racial is marked with a note that says it's not final. This is still a work in progress, so they could add a limit on how often you can change a lower buff, or they could add timers or durations to some of the abilities to bring them down a notch. Their actual effectiveness and numbers could also be reduced. I have noticed that whenever I log into a character that gets disconnected, I have a 25 day timer on the lower buff, so maybe we can only choose one buff per 25 days. But even such a lengthy timer to switch buffs doesn't stop these racials being heads and tails above what any other race has right now, it just means you won't be able to swap them around whenever you want. And that's not even the most broken part of the Zandalari racials. They have another one called Regenerating. We pretty much knew exactly what this one was going to do. It heals you up, good old troll blood and its regenerative capabilities, but I don't think anyone would have guessed just how powerful this racial could be. It allows you to heal up 25% of your health every second, and it channels for 4 seconds. You can go from 0 to 100 in 4 seconds flat. And it's on a 1.5 minute cooldown. That sounds really useful for leveling and questing in general. Out in the world, you shouldn't ever have to worry about dying as a Zandalari troll, but this racial can also be used in combat right now. 
That means you could use this racial in PvP to gain a second life. You could use this racial in dungeons to negate a huge amount of damage. Or, and bear with me on this one, if your entire raid is made up of Zandalari trolls, you basically have a free, overpowered healing cooldown every 90 seconds. If that's not broken, I don't know what is. With the regenerating and Embrace of the Lower being so powerful, I don't think it would be too surprising if a lot of guilds that high in PvP all swapped over their tunes to Zandalari Trolls if these racials go live as they are. There are two other racials, but they don't quite carry as much as weight as the two we already touched on. City of Gold increases your gold earned from creatures by 2%, which probably isn't really even worth thinking about, but Zandalari Trolls also get Teradax Swoop. This is basically a free Goblin Glider on a 15 minute cooldown, which is pretty hilarious because out of everything here, the free Goblin Glider gets the harshest restrictions placed on it. A slow fall ability with a 15 minute cooldown slapped on top is laughable, but I guess they can't let us have too much fun with our new races. Now you might be thinking, awesome, alright, the new allied races are going to be crazy powerful. What about the Kul Turans, Kalani? What about the Alliance? Well, it's safe to say I don't think quite as many people will be race changing to Kul Turans just because of some racial abilities. They have Brush It Off, which increases your versatility by 1% and when you take damage you heal for 2% of the damage done over 4 seconds. Not too bad I guess, especially for tanks. They also have Child of the Sea, which allows you to hold your breath for 50% longer and swim 10% faster. Alrighty, I always loved a bit of flavour in racial abilities. Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner reduces frost and nature damage taken by 1%, the typical racial power level I would say. Jack of all trades increases all of your profession skills by 5. That could be useful if professions actually mattered. And then they also have Haymaker. This one is actually pretty cool. You stun your target and send them flying. That's a pretty powerful punch on a 2.5 minute cooldown. The problem is you have to be in melee range. And that's it. I know a lot of people are going to scream Horde Bias on this one, and honestly I can't help but agree with you, but I think it's more of a Zandalari Bias than Horde Bias, and I would be very surprised if they don't get nerfed into the ground. Keep an eye on the PTR and the updates that come from Wowhead and such places, the Zandalari Racials have to get nerfed, otherwise they're really going to break the game. Before we move on, there's one last special Zandalari specific thing I want to show you, the Zandalari Paladin Mount. Of course, they have to ride a glorious dinosaur into battle, and of course it has to be adorned with all manner of paladin things, like shiny armor. Yet another reason to hop on the Zandalari hype. That's all the info we have on Rachel's right now, I'll keep you posted if anything changes, but I also wanted to give you a walk around the new portal rooms. There's one for the Horde and one for the Alliance, the plan here is to keep all of the portals you might want or need to access in one singular location for each faction for the foreseeable future. Instead of having them scattered around the capitals, you should be able to head on over to these main portal hubs for all of your portal needs. Any portal that leads to Org or Stormwind will also teleport you into this room, so moving around the world should become very easy and straightforward. The Horde portal room is located just off the main entrance to Ogrimmar itself. Head down the newly opened pathway and you come upon a grand room with portals to Silvermoon, Shatterath, Ashran, Azuna, Zuldazar, Honeydew Village in Pandaria, and all Dalaran. Pretty much every major box is ticked there I think, and each portal is decorated with a backdrop to reflect where the portal leads to. A very nice setup indeed, and one that reminds me of Crash Bandicoot every time I walk in here. Let's go find some purple crystals in these portals. Over on the Alliance side, the new portal room can be found at the top of the Mage Tower. You might think there isn't much space left up there, but when you go through the usual portal, you'll find yourself somewhere entirely new. This area reminds me a lot of the Paladin Class Hall, an underground hall or chapel with lots of Alliance motifs. After admiring this new little Mage Haven, you should be able to find portals to Ashran, Boralus, Azuna, Pordon Village in Pandaria, Old Dalaran, the Exodar, and Shatrath. Both of these portal rooms were supposed to be designed with enough room to accommodate any future portals, at least for a few expansions. It wouldn't really surprise me if we ended up with a portal or two being left out of this room next expansion. It all depends on how many we get, but you can see in the Alliance portal room there is a little stairway which leads to a locked gate. Behind that gate you can just barely see a slope downwards, so there might be more room downstairs to add a few more portals later on. Over on the Horde side you can find locked gates on either side of the corridor leading down into the portal room, so again, these areas might be used in a future expansion to house the portals to take us to wherever we end up going. If you want to check out these portal rooms for yourself, installing the PTR doesn't take anywhere near as long as it used to as it copies over your retail folder before downloading anything.
So why not hop onto the PTR, give everything a once over, and if you have any feedback, be sure to provide it in the appropriate forums. And that's all we have for now from the public test rounds, but be sure to stay tuned for more content as it becomes available on the PTR. We have the new Mythic Plus affix, Reaping, to test sometime soon, and the Crucible of Storm's Raid is actually opening up for testing really soon, which is pretty crazy considering the Battle of Desert Lore isn't even live yet, but hey ho, there we go. What do you think of the Zandalari troll racials? Do you think they will go live as they are? And if they do, will you race change to a Zandalari to make use of them? Leave all your thoughts in the comments section below. A big thank you to all of our supporters over on Patreon, you can see their names floating by on screen. If you want to join these lovely guys and gals, you can find a link in the description below. Remember to leave a like just below the video before you leave, and if you want to see more, make sure to subscribe. But apart from that, thanks for watching folks, good luck and have fun, and as always, I will see you next time.